sort this, it's almost impossible to make Premiere Inn look epic. In case you haven't guessed by now, I'm actually in a Premiere Inn hotel room. And for those of you who are not from the UK, Premier Inn is basically a very large hotel chain in the United Kingdom. And I'm staying in one of their hotel rooms tonight because tomorrow morning at about 9 o'clock, I have to attend a special project in South London. And if I wanted to leave my home in Manchester, to get to this place, which is Epsom, it will take around four hours, which means that I will have to wake up at about four, half past four in the morning, which I don't really like to do. So here am I holed up in this premier in room, the glamorous life of a reviewer come calibrator. But yes, here I am. And while I'm here, I'm going to take the opportunity to just talk to you very quickly about HDMI 2.1 and clear up some myth and misconceptions. So one question that I often get asked lately is, should I wait until 2018 to get a TV with HDMI 2.1? Well, some of you probably already know the answer, but here's the bombshell. There's not going to be any through HDMI 2.1 television in 2018, at least not one that supports all the features of HDMI 2.1, including EARC or Enhanced ARC, VRR or Variable Refresh Rate, the Quick Media Switching or QMS feature, or the higher resolution and frame rate such as 8K at 60Hz or 4K at 120Hz. Now, you may be asking why is this the case? The reason is because of the timeline of events of how the HDMI forum has published their specification. So the complete specifications of HDMI 2.1 have only been officially published at the end of November, which means that the first true HDMI 2.1 chipset won't arrive on the market until probably the first quarter of 2018. This is very important because all TVs that are going to be launched at CES next month, they would have already been designed, been built back in summer 2017, that is the summer just passed, which means that by the time they actually launch at CES next year and when they come onto the market, all of them won't have the HDMI 2.1 chipset. Now, you may be asking, why don't the manufacturers actually implement a chipset that can be firmware upgraded to support all these features of HDMI 2.1? The answer is quite simple really, because to support all the features of HDMI 2.1, you need a brand new chipset with 48 gigabits per second. And no IC makers, by IC I mean no integrated circuit makers, is going to be willing to take the risk to produce, to plan, to develop, to test a batch of chipset without the HDMI 2.1 specification. Because once you get it wrong, the whole production line would have to be scrapped. So maybe you may be thinking some chip makers, they can actually try and design a future-proofed chipset to try and steal a lead, to try and sell to manufacturers. But no chip maker is going to take such a big risk because until the HDMI 2.1 specification is completely known, there's no point taking risk because, you know, one small change, one small unexpected specification modification, then your whole assembly line would have to be scrapped. Then you will start incurring losses. So no chip maker is going to take that sort of stupid risk. And now here's the thing. Before you start crying into your shiny new OLED TV and think that, right, you know, it's already obsolete, there's still a small ray of hope. Because not every feature in the HDMI 2.1 specifications requires such a high bandwidth. So some of the less bandwidth demanding features, such as dynamic metadata, they can actually be supported on the existing HDMI 2.0 chipset with 18 gigabytes throughput. So for example, one of the most widely circulated misconceptions these days is that 
HDMI 2.1 is absolutely required for dynamic metadata HDR technology. Now, that's not really the case because Dolby Vision, which is a form of dynamic metadata technology, albeit it's proprietary from Dolby Laboratories, it is still supported on the 2016 and 2017 sets, some of the OLEDs, especially the LG OLEDs, the 2017 sets, they support Dolby Vision, and some of the 2016 sets, they support Dolby Vision too. So that is a form of dynamic metadata technology that was supported on HDMI 2.0b. And also at IFA back in September, Panasonic demonstrated HDR10+, an open source royalty-free dynamic metadata platform over HDMI port on their 2017 OLEDs. And now we know that there are no HDMI 2.1 chipset yet. So that must have been done over HDMI 2.0b, which is 18 gigabits per second. So all the evidence suggests that dynamic metadata can be supported on the existing HDMI 2.0b chipset over HDMI. However, whether manufacturers will implement it through a firmware update is just another matter, so you just have to keep your fingers crossed. And another point that I want to make is that because of this, there might be a lot of confusion at CES. There's bound to be some exaggeration and marketing going on. So maybe some less than scrupulous companies may claim that their devices are HDMI 2.1 even though the chipset is only 2.0, but because it actually supports one of the subset features of HDMI 2.1, the manufacturer is claiming that it is HDMI 2.1, so just look out for it. Maybe I expect to see some true HDMI 2.01 prototype, but they are just that, they are just going to be prototype. And you just need to be wary when a manufacturer starts claiming that their product is HDMI 2.1 at this moment in time because the chipset doesn't exist yet. Now, when will the true HDMI 2.1 TVs be available? Given that, right, the chip, the actual silicon, won't be available until March 2018, and the HDMI forum is going to probably end up releasing the compliance testing protocol say in about nine months time. So this gives us a long time before we can find the chipset getting into the products. So my realistic expectation is that it is only going to be early 2019 before you can get a true HDMI 2.1 television and maybe even later. Now, should you wait until 2019? Here's the thing, you know, by the time, if you want to wait until 2019 to get a HDMI 2.1 television, by that time, there might be another new standard around the corner, maybe HDMI 2.1b or maybe HDMI 2.2. So technology is constantly evolving, constantly moving forward. And I feel that the technology this year has been really, really fantastic. I've been very impressed by the picture quality of the televisions that are sold by all these manufacturers. So to answer the question whether you should wait until 2018 for a true HDMI 2.1 television, the answer is no, because there's not going to be any TV with HDMI 2.1 in 2018, at least not one that supports all the features of HDMI 2.1. Right, that's it for now for me. I'm going to try and grab some sleep and then wake up early tomorrow to try and get on with this really exciting project. I can't wait to show it to you. And if you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. I'm sorry I couldn't actually film this video in 4K because there's nothing for me to show you. There's no HDMI 2.1 chipset. There's no HDMI 2.1 TV for me to show you. And I'm going to try and see whether I can use the very, very slow bandwidth in this Premiere In to upload this video. 
And if I film it and edit in 4K, there's just no chance of that happening. At least with HD, there's a small chance. So that's it for me for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.